Hello. Oh, there we are. Hi. It worked. I love how like you guys totally know that I'm standing back there. Half of you can see me, but it's like surprise. Here she is. I didn't think. Never I'm guess. <laughs> So we've got a we have a Twitter hashtag that's going on right now uh, that you should if you guys have, if you guys can pull out your phones go on Twitter and retweet um, uh, Kelly just put out her tweet for people to retweet her hashtag it's Ask Kelly Trot I think it's Ask Kelly Trot for people to be able to ask questions of Kelly who aren't here at the con or if you're sitting in your seats and you don't feel like coming to the microphone or whatever kind of thing if you're sitting back in your hotel room watching Netflix while you're while you're watching this I don't know how you're doing that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're gonna have all kinds of different questions, and then we'll be talking about you and your career and all the different fun stuff that you've been doing. Cool. And, uh, and I, I'm not, I'm not worried. Is, is this one of your first panels that you've done at Pokemon? Uh, I, I don't, I, a Pokemon? Yeah, a Trocon? Yeah, Trocon. Um, this is my second. Second one? We did one with the Drummonds yesterday. Oh, cool. We, the royal we. Yeah. Me and my shadow. Princess Starlight Glimmer. Yes. What's that? Princess Starlight Glimmer. Yeah, Princess. thanks. Lars, get on. Maybe we can get a mic going too for you guys to come up and ask questions. Yeah. Oh, Sam's on. Excellent. So, uh, to Kelly, uh, you do you do voice acting? Well, you've also done tons of other voices um, in in, uh, in the voice acting industry. So what what other kind of voices would, would people here maybe recognize you as, or know people that would recognize you as? Uh, well, probably one of the most common things is I'm the voice of Barbie for the majority of the Mattel movies. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> one Barbie man in the audience. How many people here have ever heard of Barbie? I know it's really like obscure. Yeah, it's more the like four to seven year old crowd, but uh, but there's some. Thanks. Anybody can watch Barbie. I'm a squid. <laughs> um, so that's the big one, and then a bunch of anime. I played Songo and Inuyasha. She's the best. And Akio and Ranma One Half. I basically play anime characters like giant. Weapons like giant boomerang, giant spatula. That's my forte, I guess. <laughs> and I was in MLP G3, played a couple characters in that, and Care Bears, and I don't know, all sorts of stuff. So I was surprised there. Yes. She just popped, she didn't do much. She just annoyed all the other Care Bears and would pop out of things and go, Surprise! And all the heart attack. <laughs> You did, um, because you, you, you knew Barbie, and, and uh, there, there are other people that did the voice of Barbie before you. Did you have to, like, kind of voice match, or did you try and get your own? No, script? at that point, when I auditioned for uh, the first movie we did was um, Barbie and the Nutcracker. And before that, Barbie had uh, been in one other feature film, she'd been in Toy Story, and Jodie Benson, who played The Little Mermaid, played Barbie in that. And that was the only other time she'd been animated and voiced, as, as far as I know, especially in a feature. So it was a big deal when I was cast as Barbie because she never had a voice before, and they were trying to figure out what her voice should be like, yada yada. And they didn't want it to be like Jodie Benson had played her in Toy Story, which was really funny. But she was like super bubbly in California, and they wanted her to be more like a real, just like a real gal. So, and since then, there have been lots of other Barbies. They do Barbie in the Dream House, which is me. There have been a, another actress played, um, Diana Carina, who was, I think, on, I think she's done some My Little Pony stuff as well. She was in a few of them. And there's other actresses that play her in toys and video games and stuff. So, and on the, on the web, on their website. So there's been lots of other. Do you, you do any of the voices for any of the toys? I've done a couple of voices for um, some of the toys. I can't remember any of them right now. But a lot of, like, little um, computerized talkies. Boys, like a cash register or something. That, 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 Talking that, cash that. register. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and then uh, how did you, how did you get, uh, work doing? I don't know, I'm getting ahead of myself. A big question because I know there's a, a lot of people, but this is their first con actually. Uh, oh, yeah. Who's, who's first, 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 first con? Wow, really? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Cool. That's most hands I've seen at I'm a newbie too. I've only ever been to one other one. I went to Everfree this year. I was it. I saw you at Everfree. Yeah. Fine. Um, um, together. Yes. And um, uh, so how did, the, the big question that it's always asked, how did you get into voice acting? 
Well, I was lucky. I was a kid. I was 13 and uh, was really into theater. And I was in a youth theater in Vancouver. And the woman that ran or started the youth theater also had an agency for young people. She saw this niche in Vancouver. No one was representing kids, and there were tons of roles for kids. So she started an agency, and all of the actors in her agency were, you know, 18 and under. So I was in her agency, and I would audition for film and TV stuff, and didn't really like that all so much. I really liked theater, but didn't love the film and TV stuff. And so she sent me on a couple of voiceover auditions, because that was in the early 90s, right when voiceovers started getting bigger in Vancouver. And I went for one audition in particular, and in the middle of my audition, this director from another show was kind of walking through the studio on his way to something else, and stopped and went, who is that? Who's that kid? We need a teenage girl for this thing we're doing next week. And she, she sounds good. And so they gave me, you know, they told my agent's number and stuff. And so I didn't get the part that I went into audition for, but I got this other thing. <laughs> because this guy happened to be walking through the studio. That's one of those weird, I think everyone ends up in voiceover through some kind of accidental, crazy, random happenstance. So. Yeah, I hear that kind of a lot. It's like this one time I went into auditions for this thing. That there's a thing! Yeah. It, yeah, most of us just kind of fluke out into it. You have to have skill in order to sort of like be there at the right time and place, but um, yeah. And then there weren't a lot of teenage girls doing voiceover at that point because it was super new in Vancouver and when they had a, needed a teenage girl for something, I often got called and kind of got in there early and formed a lot of relationships. Terry Klassen, who directs My Little Pony, was a voiceover actor when I met him when I was a kid. and. Um, he directs a ton of stuff in Vancouver now, so you can kind of form all those working relationships early, and um, part of getting work is being able to do the job, but it's also no, people knowing they can rely on you and what you're like to work with. I think that's probably true of any job um, where you have responsibility, so, so it helped to be the kind of person that they knew would show up on time and read the script ahead of time. You'd be surprised how sometimes that doesn't happen. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm asking this question just because I always get a different answer from any voice actor uh, that I ask. What do you do to warm up your voice in the way to the studio? Nothing! Nothing? Oh, wow, that's actually a first. Yeah, I know. The, all the others are lying. I guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, well, there's a lot of things I do to take care of my voice. I don't smoke, I watch my alcohol consumption, um, I have a humidifier, I like, do all this weird stuff to take care of my voice. If I'm singing, I definitely warm up, or if I'm doing something that's going to be strenuous, I warm up, but, for example, Starlight or Barbie, they're very close to my natural range, and it's Sessions don't tend to be too strenuous. You know, you've got little breaks and there's stuff, there's you know, a whole scene that'll be, take them an hour to record that you're, you might not even be in. So, yeah, I do a lot of practicing with accents and I take singing classes and stuff like that. But in terms of, like, if I'm on my way to the studio, what kind of too much. What's your favorite accent to do? Oh, I'm terrible at accents. That's why I have to practice them. <laughs> uh, maybe Minnesota. I, mean, I kind of like that one. It's terrible. I mean, there's probably some people from Minnesota here, but this is the cartoony version of Minnesota. And I like to so. That one's always fun. I have some Twitter questions on here too. Oh, good. We got, oh, man, the guy that asked the shrimp question, Mary Larson, yesterday is tweeting too. Because he yeah, we got a, a pasta question yesterday. Something like, what was it? What's your favorite pasta? No, it was like, what texture should I look for in pasta to tell that it's al dente? That was our question. That was, yeah, but we didn't get it until later. What's that? Oh, it's the same guy. This guy. Just, oh, it's the same guy. It's the same guy. It's like the uh, this, this, one, this one is, which do you prefer, medium or medium rare? Uh, definitely medium rare. Medium rare? Yeah. yeah. A little bit of blood. The, the rarer, the better. Just like... Yeah. We, yeah, I don't like it blue. But definitely on the rare it's like, side. It's like, it's like scare the cow by putting the fire near it. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then just hack a piece off and eat it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, we've got one person that's asking you to scream quiet to start it over, which maybe that would be totally wreck the voice. You shouldn't do that. But well, maybe, maybe at the end. Maybe at the end. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, let's see here. That's how we top off. Pat, one question that is, did you audition for any other MLP roles? Oh yeah, all of them. <laughs> I just joke that they went through every other voiceover actor in town before it, when they were casting Starling. I'm like, okay, I guess shh, we'll give it to Sheridan. Fine. But yeah, no, I was there for the first round of auditions when they auditioned for all the main six and got a call back from one of them. I won't say which one because they're all brilliant and I can't imagine any of them not being performed by the people who perform them. But yeah, name a female actor on the show and I, or a character on the show, and I probably auditioned for her. So it was one of those five year long, like, I am going to get on the show if it's the last thing I do. And I'm really glad that I got the role I did. I think, like, I'm glad, I think that it was meant to be that I was able to play Starlight. If you, if you could, if you could step into the role with any of the main members of Main Six, which one would it be that you would step into? Oh, I'd love to play, um, Fluttershy's my favorite, but I would love to play, yeah, she's great, because I like animals, and she's great. Um, but I would love to play Rainbow Dash, because Ashley Ball has that amazing, gorgeous, brass, like, huskiness to her voice that I just can't do. Whenever that's, you get a, like, a call in for a, you know, a character, you get a little breakdown, and often they'll suggest people they want you to sound like or qualities they want you to embody, and often you hear, like, tomboy, a little bit of raps, but I go, well, that one's for ball, because I just don't have, I can kind of fake a raspy voice, but it, it doesn't sound natural, so I would love to have that natural rasp. So cool. She has the coolest voice. Cool. Yeah. Want to start speaking oh. the microphone? Oh, sure. Yeah, should we take some questions yeah. from the audience? So, if you'd like to take some, if you'd like to ask some questions of the lovely Kelly Sheridan, sure. go ahead and form a line right up here. Uh, guy here in the microphone, he's going to screen your questions here, and in between those, I want to take more Twitter questions. And then, there may be Mad Libs at some point. There may be Mad Libs. Maybe Mad Libs. Oh, and speaking of fun things, did anyone, was, has anyone, was anyone at the um, panel that I did with the Drummonds yesterday? Yeah. A couple of you? Yeah. I've got my staff of saved it. There's some structural integrity problems, it's a little... So I've already fallen apart once, but um Yeah. Isn't that great? It was perfect. Jeez, I don't really know what to do with it now. But um uh, we'll everyone is we'll come on with something. Well people with it. It's already too. starting to slip. Alright, just real quick, uh, just so we can clarify to everyone at once, uh, please when you ask your question, first state your name, where you're from, and then your question. That would make things a heck of a lot easier. Yeah, you want to know your name's where you're from. And of course, of course, everyone recognizes that there are certain things that she cannot answer, and it's okay. So, no question, asking questions about season 14, or, you know, it's just, you, yeah, don't do that. Season 14 is ponies in space! I'm made to understand, I don't, I don't know if Hasbro's been like sensory for shit, I'm made to understand that season 14 may feature at least one pony. Oh, wow. Well, you're in trouble now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, in general, I don't talk about things that haven't aired yet or have been released yet. Um, so it's hard to tell when it's okay and when it isn't, so just general rule of thumb. I just don't. And then it's fun, it's a surprise for everybody when, you know, when things actually do air. I think they're going to run out of pony, 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 pony puns before they get to season 14. That's just going to run out. Impossible. Hello. Hi, my name is Alex. I'm from Georgetown, Kentucky. And about 30 minutes ago, I had a really funny idea. Since you, you uh, voiced Barbie, you do Starlight Glimmer. Have you ever thought about Starlight Glimmer singing that popular I'm a Barbie Girl song? <laughs> <laughs> Would I, have I thought about Starlight singing I'm a Barbie Girl song? No, I have not thought about that. I think that'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in her angry mode. Is this something you can actually do? Is this something I can actually do? Well, Starlight's kind of, she's close to Barbie. What'd she do? Gosh, I don't know. When she's super angry. Yeah. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. It's fantastic. <laughs> Just a piece of plastic I found in the desert. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Gody from here in Columbus. 
Yeah, I was wondering if towards the end of the panel today, if anybody wanted it, if you would give us all our equality mark. Oh yeah, I bought my giant Sharpie. So, um, if there's time at the end, I'm also going right to the uh, autograph room, I think immediately after this. So if there's time at the end of the panel, we can equalize, yeah? Uh, and if not, then just pop by the autograph room. I think, you should, I think you should take the back to the back of your equalization stand. Oh. Yes. Like on this end? Yes, on that end. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. See, the Modifications next, to come. Stay tuned. The, the, next, the next time you're going to, someone's going to give you a sharp one. Stay tuned. It's just going to happen. That'd be rad. I don't know how I'm going to get this through TSA. It'll be interesting. I, got one I, might be, I might just live in America now. They might not let me home. <laughs> I got a, a Twitter one here for you. Do you think that Starlight is evil? Misunderstood. I think Star... I joke that she's misunderstood. I think people... But I think she's very well understood. Um, and, but I don't necessarily think she's evil either. I think she misunderstands, really, is what happens. I think... I think she honestly believes what she preaches, but she's completely blind to her, the hypocrisy that's inherent in the fact that everyone needs to be equal except for her. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think she honestly thinks that's the best way to run the show. I don't agree with her, but um, she, she buys it, which is kind of why she's so scary and dangerous, I think. And she, she's like, she, she confuses fairness with sameness. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm all for equality, but I'm also all for individuality. I think she, I think she's a little confused, you know. I'm so. Matthew from Denver, Colorado. My question is, do you have a favorite persona or character archetype to voice act? And is that the archetype of like a villainous character like Starlight Glimmer? Or, you know, some just very deranged character. Definitely the wackier the better. I like playing the bad guys for sure because I've spent most of my career not being able to do that or not being cast in those kind of roles. I always get cast as like the princess or the, the ingenue or the, you know, teen, plucky teen girl. So it's always fun to get to play the opposite of that and bad guys are always the most fun. Um, anything that lets me do something it's different from what I typically get cast as doing. So yeah, Starlight is definitely one of those. Thanks. Good question. Um, uh, hi, I'm Brandon Bush. I'm from Stowe, Ohio. Um, uh, and uh, I was wondering if I could uh, get some advice on how to get started in voice acting. Cause, sure. Because I'm just, I'm trying to get into uh, voice acting um, uh, to uh, try and go that direction, and yeah. I was wondering if you had any advice on that. Well, the main things, I mean, like we were just, main things. <laughs> um, like we were talking about, everyone everyone comes to voiceover through sort of different routes and different training, etc. But the, the top sort of three things I would say would be, one, you have to live in a center that has a lot of, that has a voiceover industry. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Ohio does. I mean, there's probably a bit of radio, radio commercials, and a couple things like that. But so the major centers are New York, LA. Um, there's a couple of cities in Texas, Vancouver, and Toronto. Um, so you, you have to live in one of those places in order to do voiceover work or be able to live in driving distance to one of those places. And then the second thing would be uh, some kind of acting training is really important. Brian made a great point yesterday. He said there's two words of voiceover actor, that the important part is the acting part. You can be really talented and be able to do a bunch of different voices, but if you can't take direction and come in and make choices and do that kind of work that an actor does in any kind of medium, of television, uh, theater, etc., that's the kind of skill you need to work on is the acting skill. So theater school is great, community theater is awesome, improv is great, uh, any of that kind of stuff is really, really helpful, rather than coming up with a bunch of different voices, which, which can be handy, but I often get cast as just kind of my regular speaking voice. I'm not one of those super versatile actors. Um, 
but I went to theater school and I've done, you know, I've been performing on stage since I was 12 or 13. So that's great. Yeah, theater definitely is a super beneficial to developing your skills as a voiceover actor. And then the third thing you need is extreme stubbornness and tenacity because it's really, it's a niche market, it's really hard to get into, and you're going to hear no a lot, so you have to kind of be good with rejection and realizing that nothing's personal and that you just kind of have to keep beating your head against the wall until someone gives you a job. And then do it again until someone gives you another job, and another job, and another job. And that kind of never ends. Like, the, being a voiceover actor is really just going on a bunch of job interviews, and then once in a while you get to work. So my job is going on a whole bunch of job interviews all the time, because you're always auditioning for things. Things are always ending, and you're moving on to the next thing. So, yeah. Hopefully that helps. Maybe we'll work together one day. Awesome. <laughs> hey, I look forward to that. <laughs> Hey, I'm Blake, and uh, I come Blake. from Houston, Texas, and I was just wondering, um, have you ever had any con experiences where you went before Ponies, where you were asked to go, and then the second part is, how's, been, how's your experience been so far with Pony Cons? Has this been a new thing or anything? Okay, cool. You were asking about cons I've done before that weren't by Little Pony yeah. conventions? Yeah. I only, I've only done a couple. I did one in Japan, which was amazing. Where I did, does anyone has anyone seen Escaflone? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I played Kotomi on Escaflone, and um, which was a Japanese cartoon. So they flew me to Japan for the Korean premiere in Japan. So they had the Japanese voice actress, the Korean voice actress, and me. So we'd all played the same character. They wanted all of us together for the premiere of the Korean version of the Japanese movie. It was really crazy. <laughs> but it was great. Uh, I was there for like four days. I it was complete zombie the whole time. I barely remember it, but it was really awesome. That was fun. Um, and I had Okonomiyaki for the first time in Japan, which is what Ukiyo Koks on Rama wanted have. So that was awesome to be able to try that out in Japan. And then the only other one I've been, I've been to a couple in Vancouver, and the other one I went to was in Chicago, which was just an anime convention. And that was really fun as well. Chicago's awesome. That's the first and only time I've been there. But um, there's something special about pony conventions. I mean, this, again, this is only my second one, but there's something about the fandom that uh, the other ones feel like work, and this is work, but it's also really fun, and people are just genuine and cool, and they're the kind of people that I would be friends with back home, so, I don't know, there's something like, sort of magical <laughs> about what you guys have created as a community, so, thank you. Um, I, I have one from Twitter here. Who is your favorite female villain of, of, of anything? Not, not just that you've done, just your favorite female villain in general. My favorite, favorite female villain would have to be Ursula. Oh, like, oh, and oh, what's that? Isma? Oh, oh, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Disney villainesses are always pretty, pretty good. Ursula. Yeah, she's great. Again, that's kind of a role, that's the sort of role I'd never get to play. I'd never be able to play that really deep, like, husky, amazing thing. So I always, those are the, always the roles I love, so the ones that I would want to do and never could. I need to work on my, maybe I should start smoking. I need to work on my deep huskiness. Well, look for, uh, look for uh, uh, Donald Fontaine. You spoke for, for what, 40 years? Yeah. Voice. All right, I'll get right on that. That sounds like a solid plan. I don't know what could possibly go wrong. The things you learned from going to pony conventions. Hi. Hi, um, I'm Josh uh, from Fairport, Ohio. Hello. Um, I had a question about the first episode of season five. Um, I was wondering how you felt about the episode, because I know it was a strange episode, and I found it kind of strange, but it was a good strange. I was wondering how you felt about doing that episode. I loved that they went there. I can't believe they did, honestly. It's pretty dark. Uh, I don't know if there's any little ones in the audience or any people who have little ones, but I wonder if it was scary. It scared me. 
Um, you know that scene where they're all just like, they're in the shack with the voice, the radio, like the speaker, and they're all just sort of like, uh, <laughs> I know, that's so depressing. Uh, so I think it's great. That's amazing. We're really like, kind of brave that they went there and wanted to kind of like tackle the sort of conversations that that would, that would ensue. So it was pretty, like I said, I'm glad that, I'm glad that I didn't get cast before because it was really great to be a part of that episode. And it, it obviously resonated with people. Resonated with me, that's for sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, I'm Benny and I'm from Hudson, Ohio. My question is, what is your favorite part about voice acting? My favorite part is that it's something different every day. It's never, you know, it's never the same day work. You have hard days and you have frustrating days, but I, I'm always sure that something is going to happen at work that has never happened to me before. Every time I go into work. And that's amazing because I get bored really easily, so. <laughs> and the people are super fun. It's always a big fun, everyone's friends, and I think you can feel that from the show too. I hope you can, that all these people actually like each other and hang out with each other. So it's just fun. It's lots of fun. Thanks. I got another one here. Uh, yeah. What was your favorite line in, as playing Starling Winner? Oh, um, which, uh, when they say something like, but what about the staff of Samus? And she says, the staff of Samus is just a piece of, what does she say? It's just a piece of what I found in the desert. I love it. <laughs> I could just see her like wandering around, going for a walk and going, yeah, that'll do, they'll fall for that. <laughs> love it. <laughs> She doesn't even build something, it's just a stick. He's a wood I found in the desert. Yeah. Greetings to you, my lord and savior, Starlight Glimmer. My name is Cody Royal from Michigan, and I want to know, out of the main four of our town, who is your favorite? Sugar Bell, Party Favor, Double Diamond, or Night Rider? Well, we don't pick favorites in our little village. Everyone is equal. But if Kelly had to pick someone, she would probably pick... I think Double Diamond's pretty funny. Ooh. Yeah, not to suck up to Brian or anything, but that crazy surfer whatever thing that he's doing, <laughs> that role, he just never really sounds like stressed out about anything. <laughs> Even though like, in some like dire circumstances, he's always just kind of like, yeah. Some wacky tobacco growing out behind one of the Starlight's cabin or something. I don't know. He's pretty great. He's fun. Hello, Hello sir. Oh, I'm hi. Silent, silent, silent. <laughs> you don't even need the microphone. The closer it is to your regular speaking voice, the, the easier it is. Any voiceover or actor I think would agree. The hardest is anything screamy is hard because you have to be really careful that you're doing it safely. There are ways to scream that are, that are safe or to yell that are safe. Um, but even then, if you're doing it for a long time, no matter how safe you're being, you're still putting a lot of stress on your vocal cords. So that's the last thing you want to do as a voiceover actor is to hurt your voice lots of ways to do that, so, yeah, anything screamy or low or guttural is hard. But luckily I don't have to do a lot of that. Thank you, sir. You're a little scary. Thank you. There's even Gretchen in space. <laughs> He's going to be in season 14. <laughs> I'm glad you got your Twilight King all fixed up too. Largest Twilight King ever! Hello! Hello. Hello. I am Pink Amina, a very cat from here in Columbus, Ohio. And I am wondering if you think that Starlight Glimmer and Sunset Shimmer are related in any way. 
I don't know, but there's something going on with those names. I mean, they don't tell me any of that stuff, but A, there's some similarities, right? They, um, well, at least with Sunset, how she was when we first met her. Um, but I don't know, there's something going on. I don't know what it is, but uh, either that or like, the name generator in Hasbro is just set on one setting and they haven't figured out how to change it. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I'm still waiting for like, sunrise. Glitter. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we'll see. Maybe that'll be in season 14 as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello, I'm Chelsea Hi. from Quaker City, Ohio. And I just had a question pertaining to your voice acting career. Um, doing voice acting in America, you don't you pretty much have a clean slate with any of the characters you've done. Um, but with voice acting over in Japan, you're at least somewhat provided with another voice, albeit it's a different language, but is there really a difference doing voice over acting here or like comparing to like series that are from overseas, is there any difference? Or? Yeah, there's a big, that's a great question. There's a big difference. So I think what you're talking about is Prelay versus um, ADR. So Prelay is for original cartoons where we record the voices first and they animate either concurrently or after the voice recording's done. So My Little Pony's done that way, Barbie's done that way, The Simpsons, Family Guy, et cetera, et cetera. And anime is um, ADR dubbed recording where obviously this cartoon already exists in another country, in another language, and then we dub it into English in, um, in Vancouver, wherever you happen to be. And the, process, the two processes are very different. So prelay, yeah, the, it's wide open, your performance is wide open, you kind of do whatever you want within reason, and you're in the room with the other actors kind of interacting like you would in a film or TV set. And then ADR is just you in a little box and you're watching the screen and you get little beeps before each line, you have your script, and you're trying to match the mouth flaps of the animation that already exists, which sometimes is really difficult because Japanese and English, oftentimes they're Japanese shows, they're very different languages. <laughs> and so sometimes you'll get up and the script will say, yes, let's go. And the three beeps will happen and your character will go, ba 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 And so you either have to work with the director kind of sort of rewrite the line in the studio or there's sometimes you have to find the, they just say, nope, that's the line, make it fit. Like Brian's Vegeta line when he was talking about the other day, you're just like, yes, let's definitely, let's go, let's, 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 let's go. So that's why sometimes you get really clear performances in anime is, they're trying their best to make those two things fit, but sometimes they don't. And sometimes there are weird cultural things that don't translate. Um, and lots of, they're really into lots of like reactions in anime. So oftentimes there's lots of, sometimes they'll just say reacts as the line, and the character will go. So there's a lot of like, ah, oh, ee, when nothing's happening. <laughs> so yeah, different challenges for sure. They're both fun. I also love your roles as Songo from Inuyasha. You were a definite awesome female role model. Thank you. And I also love you as Hachiko from Nana. Thanks. I got a, I got a Twitter one that's a great follow-up to her video. Oh, yeah. It was, um, um, do you, you, you generally get to ad-lib more in, in pre-lay. Do you ad-lib, do you ad-lib, like, at all in Ponies or in Barbie or whatever? Um. Uh, it depends on the producer. When we do Barbie, they really like uh, Rob Pudnett, who's the executive producer of a lot of the movies. He really likes you making the line your own and really encourages ad living. Um, and in other shows, they don't. They want you to stick to the script. So whatever the producer, like I'm happy to ad lib, and that's a lot of fun, especially when you get a lot of people in the room that are also into it. Uh, and most voiceover actors are. We all can fashion ourselves writers. Us are. Uh, and but some producers really want you to just stick exactly to the script. So it depends. If they're into it, then I'll do it. It's fun. Hello. Hi. My name is Reno. I'm from uh, Quaker City, Ohio. Um, this is weird. It's like a lot of people are from Ohio here. What's going on? <laughs> Strange. Yeah. Um, my, my question is, um, given uh, these two particular characters that, that you've voiced, given their particular skill sets and their their repertoires, 
how would you, uh, who, who do you think would win in a fight between Songo and Starling Glimmer? Mm. Might, might be an easy one, might be a hard one, I don't know. Is Songo by herself or does she have the rest of the team? No, she's by herself. Oh, yeah, that's true. Does she have Yeah, does she have Kilala? Sure. Okay. <laughs> that's a good answer. Um, <clears throat> I think initially Starlight would win because she's got a lot of magic power on her side. There's only so much. Well, unless Sando had the element of surprise, she might be able to sneak up on her with that Harai coax and flip it at her. But uh, I think Starlight might have that one. Yeah. But then Sango would go and get the others and come back for vengeance, as she does. <laughs> so who knows? Thank you. Thank you. It'd be a tough fight, though. I got I got that question from Flutter Tree who says if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? <laughs> he asked this of everyone is the toughest question. I would be a um, rubber tree. That sounds fun. They're bouncy, right? <laughs> I, have, I have no reason to assume otherwise. Uh, yeah. Um. I'm from Chris. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm from Akron. The Akron area, really. But um, if you had a coin right now and, and were, were to flip it, which one would you choose, mane or tails? <laughs> mane. Always mane. I like a good hairdo. If Starlight decided to, to befriend the main six, who would she start with? If she, if she wanted to what, the main six? To befriend. Oh, befriend. To sincerely befriend, well, I think she'd probably pick Twilight, because she could use her. <laughs> but if she was nice, um, she would probably pick Pinky, because I think that'd be a good way in. I think she, if she was nice and saw the error of her ways, she'd probably be pretty embarrassed and ashamed, and Pinky's probably the easiest one to become friends with. That's what she does. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, how big a fan are you of ponies? Because I've noticed as you've been answering these questions, you've been giving actually really good in-depth things that the characters would think. And I know a lot of times VAs are so busy, they don't actually get to watch the shows that, they, uh, that they're that they on. But you seem to be a big, pretty big fan. So how big a fan are you? I've seen every single episode. <laughs> watching because I thought when I when I was playing Starlight because I thought well a I should have an idea of what the show's about and B I want to be able to relate to you guys and I thought well I'll watch a couple and then I watched a couple more and then I watched a couple more and then I finished them and now I'm sad <laughs> I guess I'll have to start back at the beginning again it's great have you guys heard of the show it's really awesome you should check it out <laughs> You're, they're probably bigger fans than I am. I don't know if I could like win a trivia contest or anything, but I do really, I love the show. And it's also fun to just hear all my friends and hear what, you know, I always go to IMTV after and check out like, who played, who was that? Sometimes I can tell it, sometimes it's a mystery, so. Next year's panel idea. Trivia? Yeah, trivia. You versus Kelly Sheridan. Oh boy. I know who's gonna win that one. <laughs> Already, I'm gonna have to do some study. <laughs> but, hi. Hi, I'm Zane from Charleston, West Virginia. And I know you said earlier that you don't do a whole lot of accents, so you don't really like doing them. But when you do need to do an accent for a character, and then you like to do a Minnesota accent or something, how do you approach that? How do you practice that? You listen to something? Uh, well, ideally, I try to find someone who has that accent to teach me how to do it. And thank goodness for YouTube, because sometimes you can't find someone who is Portuguese, but with 24 hours notice. Um, so YouTube is really handy, and I have some books that I use, and I often... Um, so I'll go through... So I can't necessarily reel off an accent and just kind of ad-lib in it, but I'll make sure I can read all of my lines in that accent. And oftentimes I'll try it out, and then I'll record myself, and I'll listen back, because it's kind of hard to tell when you're doing it, if it's accurate or not, but if you listen to it back, you can go, ooh, no, that's, that section doesn't sound right, or I need to work on my O's or something. Um, 
But yeah, I take it really seriously because it's not something I feel super comfortable doing, and so I try to just practice a bunch. But yeah, yeah. The, one of the funnest ones I had to learn was a Croatian accent for a play. And luckily one of my best friends is Croatian, so what does that, that sound was handy. Like? It's kind of like Russian. It's sort of Russian, but not as strong as Russian. Thanks. Thanks. I want to hear from Joyner. Uh, Starlight's cutie mark is kind of a weird one. Unless you're not allowed to sing, what do you think her special talent is? Uh, something magical, I'd say. Probably. Yeah. Finding magic sticks in the desert. Finding magic sticks in the desert. <laughs> Duplicity. <laughs> yeah, something, something magic, I think. That's my guess. Hello again. Uh, Hi. You were saying that you don't, you may not know a lot about the show. Well, I host the trivia panel tomorrow right here in Main Events, and <laughs> you are more than welcome to come and try your hand. Maybe I'll pop in. Dun, dun, dun. That's right. It starts at 10 a.m. Okay. Maybe you'll see me there. I'm going to have to say do some study. Don't worry about it tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, do we have any more questions? Any other questions? What, how much time would that allow to last? Oh, wow, it? we've gone through like 45 minutes of the hour. Wow. Is it, what time is it now? Uh, it's 12.47. I think, I, I want to say we're going to 1, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. 1 o'clock, yeah. We have 15 minutes. Well, um, you know what we could do is I brought along some Mad Libs on my phone. Do you guys want to play Mad Libs? Yeah. So who here doesn't know, who here is unfamiliar with Mad Libs? Oh, so most of you know what it is. It's very simple. Basically, you have a little story, and a bunch of the words are omitted, and you don't know what the story is. And I ask for suggestions, you submit words, we fill them in, and hilarity ensues! Um, so I thought we could do a My Little Pony slash Trotcon themed one. The story is not My Little Pony slash Trotcon themed, but I think it'd be fun if the answers were, and then we'll just see what happens. Sometimes, they are fantastic. Sometimes they are not fantastic. Um, but we're going to try it out. Okay. Oops. I don't know how to work technology. Oh, here. Let's do this one. Okay. I need a first name. Carl. Starlight. Starlight. We heard Starlight. Let's try to keep them pony themed just for funsies. I need a last name. Sparkle. Sparkle. I need a product name. I think I heard plushies somewhere in there. It's hard to hear when you're all... I'm trying to get the first one, but it's kind of hard to hear when you're all shouting out such fantastic suggestions. I need a noun, which is a person, place, or thing. Staff of sameness? Did someone say that? Stick in the desert. Let's do that. Good. <laughs> in the 1S. Desert has 1S. Um, Stick somewhere in my dessert. I need a verb, which is an action word. Walk. Trot, I think someone said. Trots. I need another verb. Walk. Fly. That's good. I need another verb. What did you say over there? Poop. It's not my little pony theme, but I'm going to allow it because that's great. <laughs> I hope it's not my little pony themed. I want, I want to say Lauren Faust wants to answer the question about pony poop, so I think we'll allow it. Okay, it's Canada. Um, I need another verb. How many birds do you have? Winnie! Winnie, I heard. Winnie. Adjective, which is a word that describes a noun. Like, awesome. Batman. Batman is not an adjective. Your dress is so Batman. <laughs> I said corrected. Batman is an adjective. Yeah. My autocorrect once changed something like gorgeous to helicopters. And I was like, yeah. 
Stamp, stamp, no erases on that. Your dress is helicopter. <laughs> yeah, that dress is so helicopters. Okay, well, your dress is so bad. <laughs> I need another noun. Alicorn? Alicorn? Did someone say? An exclamation! Quiet! Quiet! I'm gonna put three exclamation marks after it. Adjective? Pink. Yes, pink. Pink? Oh my goodness, this is a long one. Noun? Oh, Parasprite. Parasprite. Verb. Yes. Destroy. A number. Why is this number the most popular one? Uh. I just want. Let's go for six. I heard someone yell, Batman. Batman is not a number. <laughs> My son weighs Batman pants. I need a unit of time. Batman! And it has to be plural, so I'm going to make it Batmans. I'm scared of this one. I need another number. Adjective? No more Batman. Chaotic. I need another number. That'll do. They can't. They can't all be winners. Uh, now. Oh, I heard Larson, so that's going to be the next yeah. one. Yeah. And it's another plural one. Larson's. <laughs> oh, God. Lord help one. us. <laughs> One's enough. Okay, and a verb. Dash. Dash. That's great. Okay, guys, let's see what we come up with. This one's called infomercial. Hey, Starlight Sparkle here to bring you the plushies. The best stick in the desert on the market. It trots, it flies, all without ever pooping. <laughs> Check out what happens when I witty it in this awesome alicorn quiet. <laughs> Look at that pink parasprite. But wait, if you destroy in the next six Batmans, we'll throw in a second one for just over nine thousand chaotic payments of just eighteen ninety-five. <laughs> you won't find a better balloon, folks. So pick up your Larsons and dash now. <laughs>
Well, thanks everybody. I, I don't know if I have too much time to equalize anyone right now. There might, and there might be time for a couple. Um, I'm scared. But, and then I have to dash off to the line here for you. Sure. Okay. If anyone wants to be equalized, come on, we'll try to get you down. We've got like five minutes right. before I dash off to the next thing without pooping. I'm aligned, I'm aligned. Be nice. Single don't push, don't shove. Every pony is equal. Every pony loved. Every pony equal.